at that? See, I can go into this because I was always brighter than the average student in school, and I was not doing well in most schooling because I couldn't stand school. I hated it. It's, it's, it's a paradox when you consider it, or you want to call it an irony, that although I hated school from the first grade onward, I stayed on forever getting two master's degrees and a Ph.D. from one of the great universities because in graduate school I finally found areas of learning that interested me, and nothing could stop me once I found something I loved to do. I ate, drank, and slept the fields that I immersed myself in. But in the lower levels, I hated it. I couldn't stand it. I went to sleep. My mind literally shut down. I would go to sleep in a classroom. I would doze off because my brain was shutting down. I used to joke that between the first grade and the third grade, or was it between the first grade and the fifth grade, I learned what a peninsula was. Five years, they kept repeating the same thing. Here are the 50 states, and this is what an island is, and this is what a peninsula is. But anyway, the point is, is that a lot of these kids are super bright and they can't, they can't learn in other schools. So they take them into the cyber area. This is fascinating. We'll continue to talk about it. Let's take a couple of quick calls on the Savage Nation. WDGJ Radio, line seven. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation, line seven. Next case. WABC, Rafi. Line two from New York City. Go ahead, please. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm going to disagree with what you said about uh, draft because I don't think we need a draft at all. I think that if the U.S. military is going to put up a unit as the 8200 did, then the young are going to flow to it. And I myself happen to be a computer science student graduating this year. And if I am offered the opportunity to enter a unit as the 8200, I'll be the first one online over there. Wait, wait, you're saying you would go if there was such a unit in America, but is there? Is there one? Uh, it's the NSA, but I wouldn't want to work over there. No, no, I get it. So there's no specialized unit for young people like you. People like me are attracted it, to the 8200 for many reasons, and one of them is because when they come out of there, they offer jobs and, and things better than, as you said yesterday about Facebook and, and Twitter giving up the employees. I believe they would give them up because... When they leave the unit, they'll come back to Twitter, and they'll be much better and much brighter than they were when no, they left. I, I don't know about that. I really doubt very much whether these greedy uh, buccaneers who own those companies would give up a dime. But I'm sending you your Hanukkah gift. I assume you're Jewish. You're getting government zero even though Hanukkah is over. If not, you can give it away to a friend and put it under a Christmas tree. <laughs> Stay on the line. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2640. So today, on his way to a Hawaiian uh, luau, our fearless leader gave a speech and he used the very same words that he used after the terrorist attack in Paris. He gave a speech where he tried to reassure the American people, saying that there was no, quote, specific, credible threat facing the homeland. And then we had San Bernardino. And now today he gives the very same speech. The snake gives the same speech. The snake gets up today surrounded by Loretta Lynch, who try to attack Americans rather than jihadis. And again, the snake gives the same speech. He says, we do not have any, any specific and credible information about an attack on the homeland. Of course not. No, they're going to call you up and say we're going to attack somewhere, you idiot, you. They're going to send you a special delivery letter with a specific credible threat. That's why we're talking about cybersecurity, because we don't have any. That's what we want to hear about, Mr. Obama. Not this garbage that you keep swilling out to a public that has the brains to burn down Baltimore, but not to save the nation. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I want to repeat what my team just told me. At this moment, our intelligence and counterterrorism professionals do not have any specific and credible information about an attack on the homeland. That said, we have to be vigilant. As I well, I feel much better that they didn't send a special delivery letter saying where they were going to attack a uh, 
daycare center or a mall. You know, because, look, if they had a credible threat, I guarantee you we'd know about it. Flanked by his national security team, which is a laugh, said we do not have any specific and credible information about an attack on the homeland. Now, that's the exact same pap that he threw at us after the Paris attacks. But nothing changes because there are no consequences. You see, you don't understand something. When there are no consequences, a child will continue to act out, whether it be in a kindergarten or in the White House. And I don't have to say anymore. Not only are there no consequences to his incompetence and stupidity, and, by the way, evil intentions in the minds of at least 35 million Americans, but he gets rewarded for it. Got rewarded for it, for example, by his beard, Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan the beard, the newly arrived Republican face is a beard. And he's just nothing but a beard for Obama's big government, $1.1 trillion, including a, an astonishing amount of money to uh, resettle illegal aliens through the year 2018. So I'm not going to re replay on this show today the, uh, the debate. I did it yesterday, but I didn't even want to do that. It was boring. Instead, I talked about a selective, selective service to win a war against ISIS in China through a selective, selective service of the best and brightest in the fields of uh, cybersecurity. And then I talked about the Israeli equivalent, where they take in the brightest kids, 16 to 18, and they put them into Unit 8200, high-tech spy agency. We don't have an equivalent here in America. I don't think we have an equivalent here. The uh, the project in Israel is housed in Beersheba and an office park whose tenants include IBM, Oracle, Lockheed Martin, EMC, PayPal, tied into Beersheba's Ben-Gurion University and its cybersecurity research center. So uh, Israel has a unit 8200, do we? We have uh, Loretta Lynch spying on Americans. We don't, we don't have unit 8200. We have a unit that spies on Americans and threatens Americans. We have a Stasi. We have the equivalent of the East German Stasi operating inside this country. That's what we have. That's what this man has done to this country. Instead of hitting ISIS, he hits conservatives. Instead of leading a coalition against ISIS, he leads a coalition against conservatives. So what is the point of my complaining about it when we've lost any opposition in this country that we may have had? There's only one hope. And I stand by those words. It's Donald Trump. As flawed as any man may be, and we're all flawed. I love when people say he's not this, he's not that, and he was this and that, and that, and that. All right, great. I love all of you diehards, you 100 percenters. Look in your own mirror sometime. See what 100 percent conservative you really are. You know, don't, don't think you're fooling anybody. All of these popes of conservatism out there. The popes of conservatism. Only they can decide who's a true conservative. All the little mini popes who shave in the morning don't even look at their own image and ask themselves, are they kidding? What is this litmus test for a conservative? Where'd you get it? What booklet was put out with a litmus test for conservatives? What is this litmus test? I guess only uh, you got the copy because no one else has seen it. All I know this about Donald Trump is that he'll kill ISIS. He'll bomb them into the Stone Age. He'll carpet bomb them and their families. If need be, they will disappear off the earth. No other candidate will have the nerve to do it and stand up to the uh, vermin in the press after he does it. So we can talk about the uh, cybersecurity issue. We can talk about anything else on the Savage Nation. Cyber warfare is a good one. 855-407-282 is the phone number. MichaelSavage.com is my website. And uh, I think I'll take a call. WABC Jacob, you're a diehard Ted Cruz fan. Go ahead, please. Michael, I'm not a diehard Ted Cruz fan. I'm a diehard Michael Savage fan. Let me say a few things quickly, Michael. I listen to your show every day. Uh, Ted Cruz would be, uh, uh, Donald Trump would be a fantastic president. Now, people that criticize Donald Trump for policy, Donald Trump doesn't need to tell every, like they say in Yiddish, Schmeiger, every secret policy. Donald Trump has proven over the years he knows how to get things done. He would be a great president. Regarding Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz would be a very good president as well, very different type. Now, let me just say one other thing. Michael, Barack Hussein Obama is an Islamic terrorist, and I am saying this, and I will prove it to you if you want and discuss it with me. This man... Uh, uh, hold it, you're making a statement, but uh, let's see. How can you prove he's an Islamic terrorist? First of all, you have to prove he's conducted terrorism. Okay, 
I'll tell you, well, if you look in the dictionary, the definition of the word terrorism, terrorizing, Barack Hussein Obama has terrorized this entire country by every one of his policies. He takes down the country. He's not stupid. He's doing this purposely. He understands what's going on. He's taking us down in every single way with debt, with security, with law enforcement, everything, with Loretta Lynch, with, with Kerry, with every single action in this country. The black community, uh, unemployment is down big time in Chicago with his mayor, Emanuel, that he put in. Every single thing with Al Sharpton in the White House, with the bloody oath. This man has blood on his hands with his immigration policies. Uh, what's it called? San Bernardino happened. I follow everything, Michael. I listen to you every day. I, re I, I, I follow you on YouTube, on Facebook. This man has blood on his hands because of political correctness. Like, like right. the Jacob, we know we know the whole story. We understand why he gets away with it because of white guilt number one. That's how he got elected, and because of the idiots in the media who won't put him on the call him on the carpet. A Republican who who belches, they call a fascist. This one decimates us every day, and they look the other way. But what do you expect looking at Jake Tapper? You expect an upright man or Wolf Blitzer? Tell me about Wolf Blitzer, a Jew from Israel. Tell me why he behaves that way all these years. Wolf Blitzer is a self-hating Jew. Now, let me just say one last thing, Michael. I appreciate the time very much. Barack Obama is a mafia nick. He basically gets every single thing he wants. He never gives in. Now, uh, Paul Ryan is a jerk with that beard. I don't want him there. No, I called him, I called him Obama's beard. That's the official name for Paul Ryan. He is Obama's beard. But why is he growing a beard when beards are so unfashionable? In, in Washington. What's the beard about, in your opinion? If you're an Orthodox Jew, beards are uh, uh, required by a male. Why is Ryan growing a beard? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I think it's a secret deal between him and Obama. Obama's a Muslim. He really wants to have a beard. He doesn't want to give away the... Oh, <laughs> now you're funny. So, in other words, uh, Ryan's growing a beard because Obama can't show the beard. <laughs> exactly. Let me just oh, very funny. Thing. Well, at least you have a sense of humor. At least you have a sense of humor, which is nice. Are you allowed to read uh, Government Zero, Jacob, in your community? I would love to. To be honest with you, I've been calling for weeks. I've been trying to get through to you. Now, the reason I didn't... Oh, now you've got the free book. It's Hanukkah's over, but you got a Christmas present coming. It won't come in a package with a cross. Don't worry about it, Jacob. You won't be ostracized in your community. Come on. We're just, having, we're just stay on. Uh, we're just having fun already. That's all. That's all. Heavy rain's coming here in the uh, San Francisco area, but they haven't announced the drought's over yet. Jer Jerry Brown's still lecturing about the global warming and the drought. We've been deluged with water, rain, more coming. El Nino's coming. The snowpack's getting bigger every day. He hasn't, they haven't acknowledged that there's, uh, it's over, that nature suddenly corrected itself. They're still on the same story. CEO who jacked up drug prices arrested by the FBI. How could they do that? I don't, what did he do? Let me see this one. Exec who jacked the price of a life-saving drug is arrested. How is that possible? Martin Schreck, I can't even pronounce his name. Martin Schreck, the former hedge fund manager, vilified for buying a pharmaceutical company and jacking up the price of a life-saving drug more than 54, was arrested Thursday on securities fraud, charges unrelated to the furor. The boyish-looking 32-year-old, a relentlessly self-promoting figure, who has called himself the world's most eligible bachelor on Twitter and recently plunged into the hip-hop world by buying an unreleased album by the Wu-Tang Clan, Ugh, was taken into custody in a gray hoodie and pleaded not guilty in federal court in Brooklyn. I don't even understand. What did he do? Charge an indictment unconnected? What was he charged for? His actions at another pharmaceutical company, Retrofin, which he ran as CEO until last year, Prosecutors said that in a Ponzi-like scheme between 09 and 14, Shkreli lost hedge fund investors' money through bad trades, then raided Retrofin for $11 million cash and stock to pay back his disgruntled clients. In other words, he got caught. What they all do, he got caught doing. That's all. He wasn't smart. He missed one step. He missed three New York lawyers. All he needed was three New York lawyers to cover this for him, and he would be working for the White House instead of going to jail. Shkreli engaged in multiple schemes to ensnare investors through a web of lies and deceit, said U.S. Attorney Robert Capers. Tell me how that's any different than Obama ensnaring Americans through a web of lies and deceit and pushing forward a $1.1 trillion budget. Isn't that the same thing as a Ponzi scheme? Yeah, it is, but he's running the country. It's nice to be king. So that's the story.
It is now 